In our first segment, produced by senior John Hummerkaus, we take a trip to the Evansville Airport, which has been providing air traffic service to the Tri-State area since the mid-20s. Thank you for meeting with us today, Diana. It's great to meet you. <laughs> you too. How long have you been with the regional airport? I've been with the airport now for almost six years, uh, starting in 2008, uh, a couple weeks before the, the fuel crisis hit. So we've gone through many changes in, in this short amount of time. So what does your job involve here at the airport? Well, I'm in charge of all of the, the communications, marketing, advertising, air service development, and customer service. So uh, any of the outward messages that go out into the community about the airport uh, is, is what I handle. Uh, it's, it's a great job uh, because it involves so many different things on a daily basis. Uh, you know, one day I may be talking to the general public and trying to get them to use our airport more often. Uh, you know, the next day I might be talking to airlines trying to get more flights. Uh, another day I might be talking to the general public about new flights that we're going to be offering uh, or talking to media about an event, an air show. Uh, so there's always something new every day and, and it's just uh, it's a, a neat job. Uh, being able to help the community, uh, promote the airport, and make flying a more enjoyable experience because we know there's a lot of forces out there uh, that are uh, making flying a little bit more challenging. So how did you handle that? Like first starting and all these overwhelming things, like do you just come right in and do do you, it? <laughs> you, you sink or swim sometimes, but uh, you, you just have to deal with the situation, uh, ex explain to the general public why it's happening, particularly the new uh, security procedures were a challenge for people. They didn't understand why we had to go through all these extra hoops. And just to remind people that they were put in place in order to keep everyone safe, and, and there was a reason behind them, and, and what we were doing to, to streamline the process and make it easier, even though it was an added hassle. Most people here locally understood that, and, and um, it ended up being okay, but uh, it was a challenge at first. It was more of just educating the general public of why things were being done. I see. So I understand that the airport has been in process for more than 85 years. How has it changed in appearance and how they do things? It's changed tremendously. For one, being an airport and being 85 years old is really something. There's not a whole lot of airports that are as old as us. Uh, we have a very rich and, and interesting history. Uh, starting out in the 20s, uh, late 20s, uh, when they actually uh, formed the airport, uh, going through World War II and then going through you know modern times, it's just it's been very interesting. Uh, we started out. Our main terminal was actually down by Tri-State Aero, where Tri-State Aero is now. Uh, in the 50s, they built a new terminal. Uh, that was uh, really kind of neat. Had a kind of a fancy restaurant in there, and it was a uh, a very popular place for people to go after church to eat and watch the planes come in and it was really more of that glamorous uh, phase of air travel uh, and then later we you know we outgrew that building and so we built the building that we're in now and this was dedicated in I think 1989 uh, and it's a little bit more um, it, it works a little bit better with the type of aircraft we have now and, and, and the type of flights but we're still looking at making changes in the future eventually we'll be going to a single security checkpoint and updating some of the things in, in the lobby itself even going outside of the terminal and revamping some of the way things are done. Uh, for instance, there's a lot of stairs. Uh, when this terminal was built, people didn't have the roller bags, so we'll be getting rid of a lot of the stairs outside and making ramps, making that easier uh, to get from the parking lot into the, the building. So as informational officer, you know what goes on here at the building. What would you say is the most interesting thing about the building that the community doesn't know? There's a lot of things that, uh, that go on here that people don't really think about. Uh, one that comes to mind that's just more interesting is the uh, the, the cargo operations. I mean, there are you know live fish that come through here. There's fresh flowers, but even more interesting, there's uh, you know if, if there's uh, organ donations or organ transplants, those come in sometimes in the middle of the night, and, and you don't really think about an airport being crucial uh, in something like that. But we are a crucial part of that process in getting you know, live our organs to save people's lives. Uh, another interesting thing that I uh, learned from working here is the economic impact that an airport has on a community. For every regional jet departure, that means about $4 million in economic impact every year. So for every departure that we have to Chicago on an annual basis, the community 
has $4 million that comes into this area in investments, whether it be for, through car rentals, through people purchasing fuel, staying in hotels. Uh, so the airport is very important uh, to the economic impact. And then in just working here on a day-to-day -day basis, sitting in the terminal or, or watching people in the terminal, those soldiers that are coming home and getting hugs from their family members, seeing you know grandma greeted by her grandchildren, you know, or just you know seeing loved ones you know reconnect is really kind of a neat and interesting thing and, and perks up your day. With the runway relocation project, there was initially some opposition to it by the community. Why was this project really necessary? This project is a project that's mandated by the FAA, and it was uh, in order to address concerns of safety. Uh, there's always up updates to safety, you know, whether it's roadways or whether it's runways. Uh, so the, the project is done to remove that intersection uh, at the end where two of our runways uh, connect. Uh, and also to avoid that close proximity to Highway 41. So essentially, they'll be moving that last thousand feet that's, that's closer to Highway 41 and putting it on the other end. But with this shift uh, involves a lot of relocating other things, uh, such as railways. Uh, we had to scooch Highway 57 over a little bit. Uh, it makes some major changes to Oak Hill and Kansas Road. Uh, we think that these changes are are positive where you know we we've, we've done a really good job with the construction and trying to be sensitive to the concerns of neighbors we held many public meetings before the project and got their input on what the best way uh, to address these concerns were uh, and really included all that feedback in in the final plans that that we had uh, with this project we actually have done almost all of the uh, work or actually all of the work outside of the the airport fencing uh, so a lot of that, that road work, the uh, rail realignment has been completed. This spring we will actually take down our main runway and do that part of the project and we expect it to be completed by uh, the fall, uh, hopefully by September. So um, we're really excited. It's been a great project, a $65 million project uh, that was mostly funded uh, through federal funds and then uh, partially through local and state funds. Uh, but it's provided a lot of construction jobs. It's really transformed this area around the airport and it's made uh, uh, runways e even safer than they were before. This airport definitely isn't as big as Nashville and Indianapolis, but does it cost more to fly out of Evansville? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We always encourage people to just check and check the fares, but not just check the fares, but also the other costs of flying out of other airports. We've actually even added to our website a cost calculator to help our passengers find out what all those costs are. So they can enter what they've been quoted at other airports uh, in, uh, in comparison to ours, and it figures all those additional parking costs, travel costs, gas costs, uh, so they can get a true picture uh, of what all it involves. Miss Page, a lot of people would like to know more about air traffic control mm -hmm. and see it and just how it works in general. Mm -hmm. Could you show us in the tower? Well, due to security concerns, we can actually go up to the tower and film, but we, we can uh, discuss with them uh, in person a little bit more about what they do and they can kind of fill you in on all of the wonderful things that they do in that area. When speaking with Ms. Page, she mentioned that air traffic control is off limits to our cameras. Why is that? The FAA has some pretty strict restrictions on what's allowed into the operational areas of air traffic facilities and they just simply do not allow cameras or photography. I understand. So tell me a little bit about the duties of an air traffic controller. Well, uh, there are many things that we do, but our, our primary responsibility is to prevent a collision between aircraft that are using the airports and flying around the United States. We also uh, organize and expedite the flow of air traffic to help people get to where they want to go quickly and efficiently. So what is a typical day at the airport? A typical day at the airport is, for me anyway, is uh, I can start out the day meeting with staff, find out what's going on in different aspects of the airport. I might be meeting with the FAA about operations at the airport, or we have a runway project going on talking about that also meeting with engineers. Uh, sometimes we hear from airline customers and try to address their concerns and requests. Other times I get involved in economic development organizations, so I might be actually going downtown and having meetings with uh, different economic development organizations. Okay, so what steps have you taken to get the airport where it is today? 
Well, we've done several things. First of all, uh, about a year ago, we put in passenger loading bridges, which uh, before we had those, people had to go down steps and then walk across the uh, airport apron to get on the airplanes and then climb up steps into the airplanes. Now they just walk down these jetways, which are just literally hallways right into the door of the airplane. So we did that about a year ago, and it keeps, uh, particularly this time of year, it's much more comfortable to walk through a heated hallway than out on a 10 degree ramp. Other things we've done, we're in the middle of uh, moving our runway to meet safety standards. That's been about a four year project that we should finish up uh, this coming spring, uh, fall. We'll be finished this fall. What future plans do you have in store for the Evansville Regional Airport? Well, next on our agenda is there is a ramp on the west side of the airport that needs to be basically redone. We, so we'll be fixing that in the coming year or two. And the other thing we'll be doing is refurbishing the airline terminal. Uh, it's about a little over 25 years old now, and it needs some refurbishment. Uh, enhance the s security screening process, uh, replace uh, flooring, that type of thing, and then there'll be some behind the scenes that aren't too exciting, like uh, redo the HVAC system and that type of thing, because again, it's getting to be old and it needs refurbishment. Reporting from Evansville Regional Airport for Bossy's EVSC Community Link, I'm Hope Phillips.